In this video, we will discuss a few components dealing with oil burners, uh, looking at it more closely. In this video, we have a electrode and the nozzle uh, holder and the tube for oil uh, that you'll find inside an oil burner assembly. First of all, we will have the electrodes. It will have a ceramic uh, coating over the rods to insulate it from the cabinet or anything to keep it from shorting out. So the, the current will flow to the end of the uh, electrodes. There will be a spacing between those two points and will cause a very large spark to form between this and because of the blower it will actually come out from the electrode. And we see the oil burner, it will have a tube which have a port for a nozzle to be connected to it. This nozzle will be screwed into the uh, this uh, threads and it will be able to uh, cause the oil to be atomized into small particles so it could be ignited. And so from that point we will have the the nozzle. This nozzle is designed to be able to create a certain pattern on the um, from the, the, the little small orifice. There will be information we we'll find on it. For example, this nozzle is rated for 0.5 gallons per hour. 0.5 gallons per hour. So at 100 PSI, by maintaining that pressure, it will uh, generate um, a half a gallon of oil and if you consider one gallon of oil is 140,000 BTUs, so this nozzle will create about 70,000 BTUs per hour. Also, it's designed to have a spray pattern of a 70 degrees. It has an H on it, which stands for hollow. It will be a 70 degree flame, and inside of the flame will be hollowed out. So they designed these for uh, certain purposes based on the heat exchanger. Another part of the, uh, the nozzle it has a filter part of it. It's made out of metal, usually bronze, but it's designed to filter out large particles because the end of it, where it sprays the, the mist of oil, is, it's very small. It's smaller than sometimes a, the head of a needle. Because it's under 100 pounds of pressure, it would be like a spray coming out of it, but it's a very small opening. So they will filter it before it even get to the nozzle. Sometimes they will clog up with debris and things. You have to take them out and clean them. Basically, you can use kerosene to uh, clean it. And you can remove the filter to, uh, to clean it. It's hollowed out, but it could be cleaned. You could use, like I said, kerosene or some type of cleaning fluid like um, uh, carburetor cleaner. There's nothing to adjust in this. If they clog up or plug up, best thing to do is just replace it. So they do sell kits for oil nozzles. It would come in a kit like uh, this. It would come with many nozzles in it, and it will specify the GPM, or the GPH rather, the gallons per hour. It will tell you what type of pattern, such as this one. It's a 70 degree hollow um, nozzle. This is a um, five point, this is a point five uh, gallons per hour. But anyway, they come out with many different, many different type of nozzles. So a technician will keep one of these on his truck if he deal with a lot of uh, oil burners in his career. A couple other components we want to look at. Take a better look at a transformer. With this transformer, we see that we can see where the electrodes are coming out, the springs, and like I said, it will rest on the uh, this device where you see the igniter and this transformer. Basically, the springs will rest on top of it, and it will cause it to spark at the end of the electrode. So the transformer 
it takes 110 volts coming in, but it produces between 8 to 10,000 volts at these electrodes. Uh, this is a newer type, it's uh, designed uh, by a spark generator. It's a little bit more efficient than the older style they had years ago, uh, which was a very large, heavy transformer, but these ones these days uh, produces a uh, very good spark, but it, it uh, takes less windings and less weight, and so it's a lot more efficient. Another device we want to show is, this is old style primary control. This was the safety control they used on uh, old oil furnaces to control the operation of the oil burner. Basically, it had relays inside of it, had a safety switch where you can reset it if it uh, didn't uh, light within a certain amount of time. And of course, the thermostat wires went to it, but all the wiring for the burners will also be connected to this. But how it sensed it is actually, the old style was using the heat temperature and the stack. So it was a bimetal coil that uh, was inside of the stack. Once it received heat uh, from uh, the burners operating, and it took quite some time for it to happen in minutes, but it will, since the heat, the bimetal will uh, deflect and cause it to cause a mechanical action to keep it operating. But if it didn't have heat and it didn't have a, uh, the heat to activate the bimetal, there's basically a heater inside of it, the heater switch that had another bimetal that will cause it to uh, trip the switch that need to be re manually reset by this button here. Uh, one of the problems was that sometime a homeowner would come back and keep resetting it and they could actually put additional oil, raw oil, inside the combustion chamber which wasn't very safe. The newer styles these days will use a um, electronic circuitry that will use it to generate the, uh, the small circuitry right here all through solid state and using a CAD cell to sense the flame to cause it to operate. So these days it is a lot more efficient than it used to have years ago.